What's the word, y'all? The Denver Nuggets are going to the NBA Finals, man. What a story. I, I, I'm super excited for them. Now, of course, we've known that they were going to go to the NBA Finals after they went up 3-0 a couple days ago because no team in history has come back from a 3-0 deficit. Even though there was a moment in the postgame after Game 3 where LeBron was calm, cool, collected when asked about potentially making history again because, of course, he was the first person. He was a part of the team, the first team to come back down 3-1 in the NBA Finals and it was very reminiscent of the one interview where he had the shades and it said, no team in history has come back down 3-1. That that he felt good about it. Yeah, nah, nah. There, there was not a lot that I looked at in those first three games that made me think that the Lakers had a chance to win four in the row against this dominant Denver Nuggets team. And I didn't know if it was going to be in four or five or six or seven, but I, I definitely knew that they was going to win this series. And they got it done in just four. This has been an extremely dominant run from the Denver Nuggets. First round, was, was what it is. You know what I'm saying? I told them in, in the, these videos that this, the playoffs don't start for the Denver Nuggets until they get to the second round because, you know, we got respect for Anthony Edwards and all these dudes, but the most they're going to take was, was one, and they they took one. And the second round, I, I think it was kind of split. A lot of people believe that the Phoenix Suns had enough to win the series. I personally picked the Phoenix Suns. Like, like I saw some comments on yesterday's video when I, when I admitted to the fact that I picked against the Miami Heat, not with any ill will involved, but I just thought that the other teams were better. And of course, I've been wrong on that tip. And there was comments like, you couldn't pay me to admit that I was wrong three times in a row, bro. This is what we do around here. We talk ball, we try to give logical answers, and sometimes those logical answers don't end up reality. It is what it is. So I picked the Phoenix Suns because I, I thought that Kevin Durant and Devin Booker were going to be good enough to uh, do a lot of the stuff. Uh, we also saw Chris Paul go down. I don't think Chris Paul would have changed the series too much. But for the most part, in that series, the Denver Nuggets coasted as well. Now, you do have the two games in Phoenix where Devin Booker didn't miss a shot. But as long as Devin Booker was a human being and not a cyborg... They, they did they did what they were supposed to do. And now they get to the conference finals where they're going against the Lakers who are one of the greater stories in basketball. They're one of the worst teams in their conference through the first 12 or so games. They make some big moves at the deadline and they went from a team that nobody had a lot of hope in after they started off 2-10 to beating the defending champions in the series and then getting to the NBA finals. Like that team, that Lakers team was good. You know what I'm saying? Like we might look back on history and say, oh, it was a 4-0 sweep. That's not it. No, the Lakers were a good team. But the Denver Nuggets were just better. Before we talk more about this series and the Denver Nuggets and the Lakers, I do want to let you know in about 24 hours, I have a drop with this my, my Enjoy Basketball brand and Icy, dog. When I was a kid, you could not keep me away from Icy, bro. And, and to be here, to have a collaboration with them is crazy. In about 24 hours, this ball is dropping. And it's about as clean as can be. Even got my Siggy down here. This is actually the best version of my signature. I... I if you, if you got something signed by me today, it looks nothing like this because I'd be speeding through it. But, like, I wanted to make sure it was perfect. We got the ball. We got the cups. We got the we got the cups. And we also got T-shirts and hoodies. So I'm just giving you a 24-hour heads up. Um, around this time tomorrow, they will be live. And they are limited, as, as all of our drops are. Shout out to Icy. Shout out to y'all because we they wouldn't even be interested in any of this stuff if y'all didn't sell out the last couple drops. So thank you for that. But be on the lookout in 24 hours. The Denver Nuggets are a great story, man. What, what, no matter what. Again, the Lakers were too, but the Denver Nuggets are definitely a good story because this is a team that has drafted well throughout the years, made timely trades, and then made great acquisitions through free agency. For the Aaron Gordon trade was dope. When Aaron Gordon got traded to the Denver Nuggets, he played like, like I don't know, four or five games, and then Jamal Murray tore his Achilles ACL. I, all of those leg injuries looked the same to me. I, I don't remember what it was. And of course, when he went down, the championship odds went out the window with him. But in those small amount of games where you had Jokic and Aaron Gordon and, and Jamal Murray, they were dominant on both sides of the ball. You, you could see the vision for this team to be good. And if Jamal Murray didn't get injured, they might have made this run two years ago. But boom, Jamal Murray gets injured. And, and Yoka said, all right, I'm going to thug it out with uh, Compazzo as my starting point guard. I'm going to win an MVP. And I'm going to get to the playoffs regardless of our team not being very good. And I'll never forget this series because this series corresponded from when, when my daughter was born. So I remember being in the delivery room watching Warriors versus Denver Nuggets. And then after my daughter was born sports centers on tv or one of those talking head shows and they were talking about how difficult it would be for a team that Nikola Jokic is the starting center of to make a deep deep playoff run as far as championships because his his inability to guard in space when you go against so many players that will want to bring him out and try to iso him let's be real Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors they they really did that to Jokic last year but again 
what what was his starting lineup? You know what I'm saying? It was, it's a lot. It's a lot tougher to win series when you don't have your second best player and your fourth best player on the roster with you. But either way, there's real conversations about that. Um, and I, again, I'll never, never forget it. So to, to see in 2023, Jokic have three straight series where there wasn't a second that I was watching them and thinking they, they might be better defensively with Jokic off the floor. Like, like the Warriors putting him in a high pick and roll. Steph Curry killed him on the ice. So, and they, so they were just very cerebral. Obviously, the Warriors went on to win a championship and they, they deserved that because they were just picking apart everybody. But they genuinely made Jokic look like a terrible defender. And if you've been watching Jokic for the last couple of seasons, you know that Jokic is not obviously the best defender in the world. He's not the best defensive center in the world, but he has been a good defensive player for a few years now. But you got to think about it. So, some of these people that are watching basketball, they they only really watched the moments that mattered the most was the playoffs. So some of those people didn't even recognize that Jokic was a good defender in the regular season because once it got down to the nitty gritty in a seven game series, he got exposed. In the first round, he went against Anthony Edwards, not a problem. In the second round, he went against Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. And though again, Devin Booker didn't miss a shot for two straight games, Nikola Jokic defensively held it down. And then this one against Anthony Davis, against LeBron James, and against some of these other weapons, not a moment. Not one singular moment. So na the narrative is completely dead. It's gone. And I love, I absolutely love when a negative narrative is just obliterated like that. You win a championship with Jokic as your center because the defense, man, just cut it out. I talked about it a few weeks ago. That if we are saying that Giannis is no longer the best player in ball because they got eliminated by AFC, whatever, whatever. Jokic is the best player in ball, man. You saw it again today. He hit the shot that eventually ended up winning the game. But he had the one jump shot. The shot clock is winding down. The Lakers are again. When the Lakers blew a big, big lead. And we're going to talk about the Lakers. But I, I'm just, I want to just praise the Denver Nuggets for a couple more minutes. The offense that was stagnant for the Denver Nuggets late in this game. And Nikola Jokic had to throw up an absolute prayer and it fell in. And I feel like I've seen him throw up that absolute prayer a couple different times in this series alone. Now, none of them were bigger than this in the fourth quarter in a game four to win the game. But like, you know... You had the one on Anthony Davis a few games ago where Anthony Davis had to put his head down and just smile at the idea that Jokic hit that shot. Like, he, he give it to him with two seconds ago. He going to make something happen on more times than not. But obviously, it's not a one-man show because if it was a one-man show, they might have got business done last year against the Warriors. So now we have Jamal Murray back on this game. And in the playoffs, Jamal Murray is one of those dudes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we talk about playoff P. Even though at this point, that's got different uh, connotation. Jim, Jimmy Butler... Kawhi Leonard, these players that like in the regular season obviously are very, very great. But once the lights are bright and they're in the playoffs, they improve their game. Jamal Murray is that as well. And throughout this series, you saw that. There were genuine times when Jamal Murray was unguardable in this series, man. And everything was going so great that they had the Lakers just try to find a recipe. Tristan Thompson today? Tristan Thompson, not only did Tristan Thompson play, he had a couple minutes that looked pretty good, but they called a, a, a post-up for Tristan Thompson in 2023 in a game that you needed to win. They did that because Darvin Ham and them didn't know what to do because they were just struggling to get stops. And then eventually they were struggling to score as well. And that's when the Nuggets went in a big run in the third quarter and it was no looking back. Aaron Gordon had missed every single three-point shot in the first three games of the series, and then tonight he hit three of five. I even think he hit one where his toe was on the line, so it almost was four made threes tonight. KCP was crucial. Uh, my boy might be watching all of the Lakers games on Twitch, and every time KCP hit a shot, they were saying, he know these rims because, of course, he won the championship with the Lakers back in 2020. What was it about 2020? Was that that long ago? This team drafted amazingly, obviously drafting the, the two-time MVP, uh, maybe greatest player in the world in the second round during, what was that, a Taco Bell Subway commercial, one of those. They drafted Jamal Murray when they did. They drafted Michael Porter Jr., even though he had the back issues and he fell all the way late in the lottery. That's three players that you drafted that are great. And then you also make timely and crucial trades. The Aaron Gordon trade, again, is magnificent work. The KCP for Monte Morris trade was one of the most underrated trades of all of the year. And I called it out at the time that Contavious Caldwell Pope is the prototypical shooter guard you wanted to play alongside Jokic because he's not afraid to shoot the three-point shot. And he's damn good at it. He's a 40% three-point shooter. And he also guards up. He is the prototypical shooter guard you want to put with Nikola Jokic because he's not just a spot-up dude. He will run all around if you need him to. And then picking up Bruce Bruce Brown for what you did. Bruce Brown is one of the best contracts in basketball. So you have an MVP, one of the best players in the world. You have good management. You have good coaching in Mike Malone. That is a recipe for a championship appearance. And so far, they got that. Even Christian Brown, who, who didn't play tonight, 
good draft pick at least that's what it seems like for his rookie season and and this team plays with that chip if you watch any of the interviews for coach Michael Malone like he is really upset about what the narrative is around him and his team especially in this series versus the Lakers because the Lakers are the Lakers right they're the most talked about team in basketball because not only are they in Los Angeles one of the biggest markets but they also have one of the greatest players of all time suited up on their team so in, in game one after the Denver Nuggets won the conversation about oh Rui Hachimura was guarding Nikola Jokic and it looked kind of good even I was talking about that on this channel because for like a four minute stretch it seemed like the Lakers might have found a little bit of a thing and then they tried to go back to that thing didn't work as good the, the rest of the way so Mike Malone was really upset about the narrative not being about how great we are how how much we do it, it was more about what the Lakers aren't doing and how they can get better and they did the thing and I'm excited about it still undefeated at home I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be the Miami Heat who have been killing their opposition on the road. So we'll, we'll see exactly how this is going to go. But again, we might have a week before game one of the finals and now. So we got a lot of time to start thinking about who's going to win and what it's going to do. But to see Mike Malone and Eric Spolstra potentially going to get shut in the finals should be fun, even though Spolstra got the advantage. But that don't mean Mike, Mike Malone ain't great. On the Lakers side of things, this was, uh, this was something to see LeBron James do what he did in that first half. There was, a, there was a lot of hope for Lakers fans that this was going to be the game that they take. And we just take, we take it game by game. We take it game by game. We take this one. We go to the Mile High City. Maybe we still win a ball arena. You know, we right back into this series. LeBron had an amazing first half. It was the most points he scored in the first half. Maybe ever? I don't know. I think I saw a graphic. It might have been ever if it was never in a long time. And AD ended up with 24-14. A lot of those ended up being like in the fourth quarter or so. But the first three quarters, it felt like Anthony Davis was kind of sleepwalking through this one. And it's hard to gauge how to how to feel about the Lakers right now. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you have a 37, 38 year old superstar player that is of course aging and maybe showing a little bit of his age, the objective is basically championship or bust. And it was something we talked about months ago before Rob Palenka made those trades where he was like, man, Rob Palenka and them owe it to LeBron James to give him a roster that's competent enough to compete. And he did. The Rui Hachimura trade looks really good. D'Angelo Russell trade looks maybe better a week ago than it did now, but but it's, it's better than what you were getting with Russell Westbrook on the roster. And that's not a shot at Russell Westbrook, but objectively, the team looked better once they added a little bit more spacing. So the trades that he ended up doing ended up helping the Lakers get to the conference finals after a slow run, but it is also championship of bust. So was this a successful season? Was, it a, was this a failure of a season? I can't, I can't really call it. I guess it's all up to interpretation. Now this offseason gets gets really interesting because there's a lot of buzz through the first week, a month and a half of D'Angelo Russell being on the team about how excited they were to bring D'Angelo Russell back. Because again, D'Angelo Russell was, you know, he was doing good stuff for them for the majority of these things. But we just saw in the series, well, sometimes it's hard for him to play at all. So from my understanding, it's only Anthony Davis, it's LeBron James, it's Jer Vanderbilt, and Max Christie. Those are the only people that have guaranteed contracts for next season. And I read somewhere this morning that if everything breaks perfectly, and that means renouncing the rights of D'Angelo Russell and potentially moving out off Jer Vanderbilt, that they can open up a space for about $35 million. And though $35 million is not a max contract, it's a really good number if you want to bring in a third star. But do you want to bring in a third star or do you want to continue to build the roster with the idea of depth? Because if you commit that $35 million to a third star, now you sign a minimum players for the rest of the way. And again, that hasn't been a recipe for success in this Lakers regime. Austin Reeves is about to get a ridiculous offer from some team. I don't know what team that is. It might be the Charlotte Hornets. It might be, you know, one of these younger teams that could just use good bodies. But he's going to get paid. You know what I'm saying? And the Lakers have the opportunity to match that contract. But he's about to get paid, and, and for good reason. He's a really, really good basketball player. But like now you look at some of those pieces from the big trade, the D'Angelo Russell, the Jared Vanderbilt, the Malik Beasley, not, none of those people in this series specifically made a positive impact on it. So should you feel attached to those dudes, even though in the regular season they were crucial to the, the turning of your season? I've really got a lot of decisions to make, man. I'm, I'm, I don't envy that man at all. Actually, I don't envy nobody in the front office job because if you mess up, uh, the NBA Twitter's on your head. You know what I'm saying? They on your head. Um, so I think I'm going to end it right there. Again, we got a week to start thinking about the matchup and everything. So I will take some of that time. Uh, I also have another channel named Hint of Hoops. I will put the link in the description. Why did I create another channel? Just the, I don't want to say troll, but sometimes I'll be, I'll be looking for a way to talk about basketball in a creative way or do videos creatively about basketball that don't fit on any of my channels. And that's going to be it. I made a video where I watched every single Michael Kidd Gilchrist jump shot. 
That's fun. I made a video about the time that uh, Bismack Biyombo tricked the team to giving him almost $80 million. That was fun. And I made another video about Kevin Knox in Fortnite. I don't know. I got a list of fun videos that are going to be five minutes or less. And that is Hint of Hoops. I'll put it in the description if you're interested. Um, yeah.